Hello and welcome to another video in the series Questions and Answers Q&A. Over the last six months, I've received a number of emails asking about the city of Medina. Now, if you are new to this video series, let me back up and explain that in 2010, I wrote the book Quranic Geography. And a couple of years later, I wrote the book Early Islamic Qiblas. A documentary film has also been made, The Sacred City, and that film is available on YouTube on this channel. Those books and the film put forward a theory that the original holy city of Islam was actually Petra in Jordan, which is where the Black Rock and the Kaaba building were originally located. The founding of Mecca in Saudi Arabia did not happen until some years after the Prophet Muhammad died, during the second civil war known as the Fitna. In the books and the media, I demonstrate that all of the mosques in the first 100 years of Islam faced towards Petra in Jordan. I propose and I defend the idea that Muhammad was born and raised in Petra, and Petra was the original location of Masjid al-Haram, uh, with the Black Rock and also with the Kaaba building. And when we visit Petra, we find a foundation there, the foundation that fits the measurements given by Azuraki when he tells us the dimensions of the Kaaba building during the lifetime of Muhammad. All four sides are slightly different, and this is exactly what we find in Petra. Those measurements do not fit the Kaaba in Mecca. The Kaaba in Mecca comes later, after the Civil War. I then go on to provide over 50 other indications that support this idea in early Islamic Qiblas. Later, I made some YouTube videos and I demonstrated that some of the nations around Petra also referred to, uh, to Petra as Mecca. Up until now, scholars have thought that references like this were errors and that the writers didn't know what, where, the, where the original Mecca was. They were making a mistake. But once evidence started to come that mosques all over the world during the first century of Islam all faced towards Petra, then uh, it suddenly made sense. One of the many names of Petra was Mecca. It also had the name Mother of All Settlements, and there were other names that referred to the city of Petra. Uh, there's a lot of information that we've collected and put together. It's in the documentary film, The Sacred City, and there's more and new information that has come out. We've put it into YouTube format. Now, in this video series, I am attempting to answer or speak to the questions that readers and viewers have asked. And our topic today is the city of Medina. Where does it fit in all of this? Was Medina in a different location? The simple answer is no. Medina has always been Medina. Now, in order to back that up, that's where we need to understand a couple of things about the city of Medina. When Muhammad and his followers were persecuted, some of his followers emigrated to Abyssinia, that's Ethiopia. This was the first Hijra. Uh, we will look at the Qibla of the mosque that they, that they built when they arrived in Africa. It is still there. And we, when we do early Qiblas, a, a video series, we'll include that mosque and you can see. Now, some of Muhammad's followers went back and forth. Now, eventually, the persecution stopped because Muhammad uttered favorable verses about the gods Alat, Al-Usa, and Al-Manat. Then he retracted re those verses, and persecution started again. So some of his followers suggested that they move to an area known as Yathrib, which would later be called Medina. Now today Medina is a modern city, but it wasn't always so. Originally, Medina was not a city. It was just an area known as Yathrib. It was an agricultural area. The very name means the place of the bull or the place of cattle. You see, Medina was a low area where the runoff water from the surrounding barren mountains collected. The valley was green, uh, but for many centuries, Yathrib was not much more than a swamp. From the outside, it looked like a lush green valley. However, its wetlands were a source of sickness. Bukhari's Hadith tells us, When Allah's Apostle reached Medina, that is at the end of the Hijra, Abu Bakr and Bilal became sick. 
When Abu Bakr's fever got worse, he would recite poetry. And Bilal, when his fever deserted him, he would recite poetry. And one of those poems is, Would that I have stayed overnight in the valley, wherein I could be surrounded by Ithkar and Jalal, which are two kinds of grasses. Would that one day I could drink the water of Majanna, and uh, would that the two mountains, Shama and Tafil, would appear to me. The Prophet responded, O oh Allah, curse Sheba ibn Rabiah and uh, Utba uh, bin Rabiah and Umayyah bin uh, Khalifa, uh, as they ter uh, turned us out of our land to the land of epidemics. Allah's apostle, apostle then said, O oh Allah, make us love Medina as we love Mecca. Or even more than that, O Allah, bring blessings on our food and make the climate of Medina suitable for us and divert its fever from us. Aisha also added, when we reached Medina, it was the most unhealthy place of Allah. The lands and the uh, mountains and the valley of Medina used to flow with impure colored water. To the outsider passing by Medina, it was a long valley with fields and trees and fortified houses. These houses were designed in such a way that the workmen in the fields around them could be protected by mud walls. In case of attack, the people could run to the houses and fortify themselves inside their, the, the towers. Here, mud houses are being constructed in Yemen, in a similar style to those early houses in Medina. The workmen mix the mud with their feet, and you can also see they're not far from their weapons. Yathrib uh, was known as an oasis and can be found in the ancient records going back as far as the 6th century BC when it's mentioned in the Chronicle of Nabonidus. Uh, Ali uh, Hafiz tells us about the first major wave of refugees into the area that we know about started about 70 AD when Jews arrived fleeing from the destruction of Jerusalem by the Roman forces. In the years that followed, more Jews arrived, some moving on to Yemen, some staying until there was a small thriving community of Jews there. In the time of the Hijra, the Jewish tribal groups in uh, Medina numbered more than 20. By, by this we can assume that there were more than 20 distinct Jewish families or large clans in, the, in Medina. The first group of Yemeni refugees uh, arrived there around the 2nd century AD when the Madhab Dam broke for the first time. The final and possibly the largest migration of Yemenis was between uh, 542 and 570 when the Madhab Dam failed for the final time and over 50,000 people moved out of Yemen, some stopping in Medina, others moving on to Egypt and Libya and even going as far as Tunisia and Morocco. Two Yemeni tribes, the Aus and the uh, uh, Khazraj uh, tribes, they settled in the Yathrib Valley and they farmed there and eventually they united as one to become known as the Ansar, who uh, them, uh, allied with the Jews at first when they needed to defend themselves, but later trouble broke out between the Ansar and the Jews and some of the Ansar, they had heard Muhammad's teaching and so they invited the followers of Muhammad to come to the Yathrib Valley and aid them in their struggle with the Jews. Over the years, the area has been known as uh, Yathrib. It's had many different names. And uh, Ali Hafraz notes, uh, notes in his book uh, the history of uh, Medina and he, in 95 different names it's had. And I've listed some of them on the screen. During the founding years of Islam, it was known as uh, Medina del Rasul, the city of the Prophet, which when shortened just became Al Medina and eventually Medina, the city. After the Hijra, Medina became the center of Islam. It was here that much of the Quran was revealed, and it was here that Muhammad and his followers not only subjugated the Jews, but also began to build their fortunes by plundering merchants traveling down to Yemen. At first, they were careful only to attack passing caravans, but eventually they ranged wider and wider until much of central Arabia was under their influence. Following the death of Muhammad, the next two caliphs ruled from Medina. Abu Bakr did much to uh, spread Islam within the Arabian Peninsula. His armies marched as far as Iraq and Syria. Umar was next, uh, the next caliph, and uh, during his reign he spearheaded uh, the spread of Islam through the peninsula and his armies defeated the Persians and the Romans and he marched over into, uh, into Egypt. 
As Medina was the city of a newly born Islamic state, it was here that administrative and financial rules were laid down. It was in Medina that Islamic principles and teachings were discussed and taught. Military buildings were built and uh, uh, centers of learning were, constru uh, were constructed there. The third caliph, Uthman, continued the spread of Islam by armed force, taking it over to Cyprus. And when Uthman was assassinated, then uh, the Ma'iyas took over and they decided to move the capital to Damascus in order to have better control of the growing empire. Later, starting in 63 after the Hijra, Medina and Mecca became involved in rebellion against Damascus. During this time, a number of civil wars took place, and uh, eventually the holy places were totally destroyed. When the Abbasids took control of the Islamic Empire in 132 after the Hijra, Medina continued its state of unrest and rebellion until the Abbasids destroyed all of their opposition in Medina. Later, in the year 1058, that's uh, 654 after the Hijra, a volcano erupted in a place called Hubs, and it continued for three months. The lava flowed towards Medina, but it stopped 22 kilometers from the city proper. Now today, the city has over a million uh, people in it. There is little doubt that the modern city of Medina is the one spoken about in early Islamic history. As I've mentioned, the earliest mention of this city is found in the records over a thousand years before the Prophet Muhammad. This area, uh, the layout fits exactly the descriptions of the early uh, uh, records uh, talking about it has the two mountains there and the Muhammad was there where he dug the ditch between the two mountains to defend the city from the Quraysh who were attacking from the north they were coming down uh, from the north into to Medina since uh, Petra was the founding city of Islam it was in the north and all of the caravans from uh, Syria were going down to to uh, Yemen were passing by and thus uh, made them targets for Muhammad's bandits. The Kuba Mosque was the first mosque built by Muhammad. Khalif Uthman made the first renovations to this mosque. It was renovated again in 435 after the Hijra, 555, and uh, uh, about each hundred years, six, uh, seven, eight hundred, and then uh, 1245 and so forth. And so eventually the mosque was totally demolished and is rebuilt to what we have today. Masjid al Qiblatain is another important mosque, and it's traditionally thought that it was here that Muhammad changed the direction of prayer. He was originally facing towards the Roman province of Syria. He turned around and he faced Mecca in Saudi Arabia. That's what the traditional accounts say. So this mosque also has a very long history. The interesting thing is that it maintained two Qiblas over the centuries, even when it was rebuilt in 626. Important date is in 1987 when this mosque was completely renovated. They tore it down and uh, they even uh, the old niche was there. They tore it down and they built a new one that faces Mecca in Saudi Arabia. Nothing remains of the original mosque, uh, but uh, uh, Abdel Wahid al Wakil, the architect, he made drawings of the foundation stone. So we ha those drawings uh, show that there were the two Qiblas, one for facing north, one facing Mecca. So uh, that demonstrates this. Now the, the problem is facing Mecca and facing Jerusalem and facing Petra are very, very close. I believe it faced Petra, and but people thought at this point they'd forgotten. Uh, they'd forgotten Petra, and so they said it faces Jerusalem, and that's where that whole Jerusalem account comes from. The original records just mentioned the Roman province of Syria. This mosque faced it, and uh, it faced the Roman province of Syria, but I believe it faced Petra. But we substantiate that by all the other mosques that we can look at at the time, and all of them pointing to Petra, not to Jerusalem. So, um, it becomes obvious as we look at all these mosques, they faced Petra for almost another, for almost a hundred years. And that's when the uh, Prophet's mosque uh, it was there, and the Prophet's house was there, Aisha's house is there. 
and uh, the mosque was expanded over time so that it includes the tomb of, of uh, Muhammad and Aisha and so forth. This is the, the, the mosque of the Prophet. Uh, so it's called the, the Masjid al-Nabi that is there. So there are graveyards there. al is the Baqi is there. It's a graveyard. Many famous people are buried there. So I really don't think there's another place that fits. As far as I'm concerned, Medina is definitely Medina. Now, some people wondered how about how far the city is. Like the distance between Petra and Medina is quite long. And this is only because they are used to the idea of Mecca being close by. But actually, it makes sense that uh, it is this far apart. You can see the two mountains where the Muslims uh, dug the ditch. And you can see that it took them sometimes several months to go from uh, the holy city to Medina. Now notice that whenever the Quraysh and those with them attacked Medina, like in the Battle of the Trench, they always came from the north. Mecca's in the south, but uh, the attacks always came from the north. Many Muslims know the story of how Abu uh, Sufyan, uh, known as Shakur bin Harib, he attacked Medina, he was beaten off. Did you know Abu Sufyan paid taxes to the Byzantines? He was given an army, he was given military supplies from the Byzantines based in Damascus so that he could attack Medina. How could he do that if he was in Mecca, which is south of Medina? Everything about Abu Sufyan speaks to us of a northern Arabia uh, existence. Have a look at the video sir, uh, and the series about, um, about the Romans. Where were the Romans? So Medina fits Medina. In Saudi Arabia, there's no question in my mind that the ancient Islamic records speak of Medina and it's the same Medina we know today. Now, some people have written me and uh, said maybe Medina is in a different place, but I don't see any supporting evidence whatsoever, just people guessing and speculating. Some people argue that Medina was too far from Petra, and I agree it was far, but as I have said, there are some trips that are recorded go for several months and so forth. So it was there. Now, uh, if you think about where the Battle of Badr was, I have a video on that, video number 10. You can go back and look at that in, uh, in the video series um, Archaeology in Islam. I placed the Battle of Badr at Qasr al Kastal uh, in Jordan. Uh, it was the earliest known Muslim graveyard. And as long as Muhammad and his men raided just around Medina, the Romans never reacted. But once they penetrated far into Byzantine controlled area, that's when the confrontation started. You can learn more about the proposed site of the Battle of Badr, as I said in video number 10 in Archaeology in Islam. So now in conclusion, I'm suggesting only changes for the city of Mecca and the location of some of the villages and other places that were close by around Mecca. These, I believe, are references to the city of Petra, known in Greek as the mother of all settlements, and by the polytheists in Petra as Mecca, the Mecca. So I'm Dan Gibson. And this has been another video in the series Q&A, Questions and Answers. Uh, make sure you see the documentary film, The Sacred City, read the books and the papers that are written on this topic. Thank you. Bye-bye.